ancient old growth forest ecosystem. Pretty spectacular, huh? I mean, ecosystems like this just host so much biodiversity from not only the different critters that live here to the different plant and tree species, but diversity of ages as well with ancient matriarch western red cedars like this beauty here that provides shelter, shade, and nutrients to other saplings in the understory, as well as a mix of different amabilis firs, western hemlocks, douglas firs, and sicca spruce. From the lichen and the mosses way up there in the canopy to the rich layer of topsoil here in the understory, these forest ecosystems act as giant sponges absorbing and filtering water from the atmosphere and rainfall as in regulating its flow as it finds its way down these hills and mountains to the the rivers and streams below. Wow. When these forests were initially logged about half a century ago, many were done in a method of clear cutting quite similar to this without the greatest foresight into the impact it would have on the broader landscape. With all that biodiversity literally leveled to the ground, all these dead roots and upturned soils are going to be exposed to the elements, which is going to lead to a faster rate of topsoil erosion, leading to faster water runoff carrying heavier sediments, and rapidly fluctuating water levels and muddying up of rivers downstream. In these early days of logging, clear cuts were never replanted, they were left to regenerate naturally, which often led to monocultures of trees like western hemlocks, which quickly took advantage of these open areas and when replanting efforts did begin it was often done with Douglas fir trees as Douglas fir trees are the most profitable trees to plant but Douglas fir trees aren't necessarily ecologically appropriate to these coastal environments so in either case you end up with either an unnatural or a non-native monoculture of trees that greatly reduces the biodiversity here. In order to rehabilitate these damaged forest ecosystems, we need to restore the biodiversity of native species at different ages, which is going to allow for all of this to flourish here. Restoration here often involves thinning out these monocultures to create standing dead snags, coarse woody debris and fallen logs, and gaps in the canopy that allows for sunlight to come into the understory so that saplings here can survive. Here, western red cedar, amabilis fir, and sicca spruce trees are planted to increase species richness, which also allows for other species to take root like this red huckleberry here. By breaking up these monocultures, we can create a multi-layered canopy that allows for all this diversity to exist here, ultimately creating a more heterogeneous structure to the forest.